Welcome back to the Jones Zone, everyone. And today I'm going to be getting into damnation. And by that, I mean the very real threat of going to hell for not believing in God and accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Now, recently, there have been a number of discussions relating to the topic of hell and whether it exists or not. There are many theologians and Christians who debate if there is a literal hell, you know, with some trying to downplay the existence of hell by saying, well, you know, hell is, it's, you know, it's uh, Gehenna is actually mentioned in the Bible. And some would say, well, hell isn't actually mentioned, uh, you know, and uh, by Gehenna, they mean the actual valley of Gehenna, which is the actual place where bodies were burned and disposed of. And its location is west and southwest of Jerusalem. But, uh, anyways, now we as Christians should be very cautious of so-called Christians who try to downplay damnation because it is a very real consequence for rejecting or not believing in God. Now, whether or not hell exists under the earth or if it's in some other place uh, displaced from it, that can be debated. But what's certain is that you'll be going there. To literally be tormented forever. Now, why is that? Well, let's remember that when God created hell, he did so for the purpose of punishing the fallen angels for rebelling against him. Hell is referred to as the lake of fire in the Bible. And this is mentioned in uh, Revelations chapter 20, verse 10 through 15. Verse 10 says... And the devil, who deceived them, was thrown into the lake of burning sulfur, where the beast and the false prophet had been thrown. They will be tormented day and night, forever and ever. Okay, now look at what the fallen angels say in Matthew 8, verse 29. Suddenly they screamed, What do you want with us, Son of God? Do you come here to torture us before the proper time? Okay, so the fallen angels know that they are beyond salvation and that they will inevitably burn in hell forever. And they deserve every bit of it because they were made perfectly with godly wisdom, free will without sin, and they used that free will for inequity toward God. Humanity, on the other hand, was not endowed with godly wisdom and were not made perfect either. Thus, they could be led astray as we see with what happened in the Garden of Eden when Satan tempted Eve and Eve tempted Adam to eat the fruit of forbidden knowledge. And Adam, he's the head of humanity. And since we are the descendants of Adam, Christ came to die for us so that we would all be saved through Adam's line. He died for our sins, not the sons of God, who are the angels. So every time the Bible mentions the sons of God, it's talking about the angels and the fallen angels. You know, I've ran into some real kooky Aryan Christian stuff that says, no, the sons of God specifically refers to uh, white people. No. Now, that's the angels. But here's what the book says about the judgment of humans and where they go after they die. Uh, Revelations, the judgment of the dead, uh, verse 14. Then death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. The lake of fire is the second death. Anyone whose name was not found written in the book of life was thrown into the lake of fire. Now, what do they mean by the lake of fire? Is this a separate lake of fire not meant to be taken literally? And maybe it just means God is going to destroy you, throw your soul in there and completely obliterate you from existence in that fire? I don't know about that. Let's look at Matthew's uh, chapter 25, verse 41. Then shall he say also unto them, on the left hand, depart from me, ye cursed into everlasting fire, prepared for the devils and his angels. See? You're going into the same lake of fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Souls and spirit, these things are immortal, so you can't actually kill them. That's why hell was prepared. For the angels. 
Okay, and when you were born with a soul, you know, it's not a pre-existing soul. God makes it just around the time when you're in your in the womb. And once you fully grow and you you know you uh you're born, you have a soul that will last forever. So you cannot be destroyed. But God defines the second death as being everlasting separation from God. That is the second death. Okay? There's no separate place of torment for humans, which means that the second death is to be interpreted in the same sense that it is for the angels who are everlasting, immortal beings. Actually, human beings were technically everlasting too. We just weren't created in the beginning like the angels. But once God creates our souls, we live forever either with him or in hell with the fallen angels. There's no getting around this, people. If you defy God... And you take to sinning and living a rebellious lifestyle, you're going to hell forever with the fallen angels. And if anyone tells you otherwise, they're being rebellious. I don't care how sweet and soft and loving they sound when they're presenting this information to you. They are being deceptive, whether knowingly or not. You have to remember, Satan was once an angel of light. And he can take that form again and say things that sound sweet and loving. But things that are actually deceptive and that go against the word of God. And he'll say things like, Don't worry. God will always love you, no matter how much you sin. And that's when you say, uh, Yeah, God is loving, but he is also just. Which is why he says, Depart from me. You know? and th Before he sends you into the lake of fire. And yes, I know there are those of you who focus on the loving side of God, which is a very real side of God. It's true God loves you. But it's also true that God is a just ruler, a noble and a righteous one at that. But how can God be good if he allows evil to go unpunished? Seriously, think about that just for a minute. How can God be good if he allows evil to go unpunished? Yeah, I, I know that's a tough one, right? The answer is that God wouldn't be good if he didn't punish evil. Okay? See, this is how it works. Good rewards good, but punishes evil. And evil rewards evil, but punishes that which is good. And let's just say uh, an evil system would reward a criminal, for example. Uh Let's just say that there would be a job position, let's say uh, for a, a bodyguard or a policeman or a soldier or something, and uh, that position pays higher wages for convicted murderers who apply for that job. So, you know, uh, let's just say something like that. If you killed somebody and like, hey, you have a convicted murderer, we'll, you know, we'll give you extra pay for that because you're a murderer, you know. Uh, yeah, something like that. You see, it rewards, it's evil rewarding evil things evil deeds. And then we see this also in business, uh, you know, with uh, policies that reward the, the rich, where uh, the rich are rewarded for having all these business incentives that are very violent and, you know, and harmful to the uh, environment and things like that. And it's like, what is going on? How are, how are, how are, how are you being rewarded uh, for this? You know, that's just, those are just examples. That's evil rewarding evil. Because it incentivizes murder, which is a violation of one of the Ten Commandments. Look, the Bible says what it says. And so if you really believe in God and the authority of God, the Holy Spirit who wrote these books through men, who are you to just interpret these things and believe what you want from them? Unfortunately, okay, I'm going to say unfortunately, this is not a matter of belief, people. So if you don't want to believe in judgment, because there are Christians who believe everything else, but they don't want to believe in judgment. Let me just say, that's not going to change the fact that you'll end up there in the lake of fire. In fact, you might actually get it worse, because now you're trying to make the Bible be what you want it to, to be. Believe what you want to do. And, and don't see how Luciferian that is. That's the stuff Lucifer is doing. You know, yeah, you can talk soft. You know, so I, just don't, I just don't think that that's what a loving God... Yeah, God is just. He's also just, he wouldn't be good. If he didn't punish evil, you got to keep that in mind. Every single time you get that, he, but he did love just good and good and loving and good. 
So that's all I have to say, guys. And uh, thanks for watching.